Hello, I'm Kumea Shorter Gooden, the Chief Diversity Officer here at the University of Maryland. Our diversity and inclusion help keep our institution on the cutting edge of research and innovation, teaching, and exemplary public service. In this video, you will hear from student employees, staff employees, and faculty who work all across our university, discussing ways we can create full inclusion on campus for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, or LGBT people. Regardless of what beliefs you may personally hold, we all have to work together, and we all must ensure that our behaviors and communications with other people exemplify inclusion so that the workplace we get to come to each day is the workplace that we actually want to come to. Why LGBTQ inclusion matters to me is because when you're at work and if you feel like you need to be guarded or hidden, it really prevents you from doing the best job that you can do and sort of makes you smaller as a person. And when you're allowed to be who you are and project yourself with the level of comfort that you have, it allows you to do a better job and it allows you to feel more like yourself and relate to the people that you work with in a more positive way. LGBTQ inclusion matters to me because I firmly believe that all have the right to be their full and authentic selves. Cuando me siento incluida, es mucho más fácil que yo pueda ser más amable con los demás, poder hacer mi trabajo, poder traer al trabajo lo mejor que yo puedo. I took an oath years ago as a police officer to protect my community, and our community is very diverse, all facets, and everyone deserves the same protection. Uh, so for me, it's personal in that my brother is gay, um, and I know some of the issues that he's experienced, but beyond that, it's I've sworn to protect this community, and that includes everybody. LGBTQ people are not all white men like me. Not all bisexuals are confused, and not all of them prefer one gender more than the other. Not all trans people can or want to medically transition, that is, hormonally or surgically alter their bodies. Not all gay men are great cooks. I know that my partner and I sometimes like to go home in the evening and stick a frozen pizza in the oven. Not all lesbians are excellent repair people. Not all LGBT people love techno music and Madonna. First of all, I'm a mother and I'm a lesbian and um, I am a trans ally here on campus and everywhere. I'm an ally for all students and all staff and faculty. I'm a nurse practitioner at the University of Maryland Health Center. I am a musician, an artist, an actor, and anything else creative that you can think of. I am agender and pansexual or queer. I am a horticulturist here on a campus and I also happen to be a gay man. I'm a teacher here on campus and also an administrator. I commute from Virginia. I identify as vegetarian and Filipino and I'm also queer and trans. I'm a proud ally, I'm a mother, I'm a swimmer, I'm a program director in the University Career Center. I am a lesbian and I'm a grandmother of three granddaughters. I'm the business manager at the Philip Merrill College of Journalism. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Classics and I am uh, about to get legally married here in the state of Maryland to the man I've been with for the last 17 years. I'm with the University of Maryland Police Department. I am an ally and I'm a brother of a gay man. I am a runner. I am lesbian. I am a Chicana. I am a queer and transgendered mixed race person of color. I work for the Department of Resident Life doing research and assessment and I'm affiliate faculty with the Asian American Studies program. I am an ally. I am an administrator and an educator. I am an ally. It 
But to make the workplace more inclusive, it's really a matter of respect. Um, it's respecting each other uh, and it's treating people the way you want to be treated. And it's as simple as that. It's, you know, you want to be treated well, you treat others well, and it's given in kind. And the LGBT community is uh, no different. To me, respect uh, doesn't mean that you have to be bosom buddies, but uh, respect can be very simple. Uh, just saying uh, hello, good morning, goodbye, uh, showing courtesy uh, is a good start at showing uh, respect. Uh, being able to listen to people's uh, ideas rather than shutting them down before they're able to uh, get a chance to express their ideas. Not to make assumptions um, and to consider your language when you're talking with people. When we think about retention of staff and students on this campus, it's really critical, I think, that we consider how people feel included and engaged. Understanding the nuances related to the LGBT community, as well as other ways of identifying, is really critical. Um, just making the effort to understand a little bit about how your interactions affect other people can really help bridge those gaps and make people feel included and welcomed. Last year when I got married, uh, once I returned to work, several of my co-workers came into the office congratulating me and asking me to see pictures of the wedding. One person in general came and said, how should I refer to your wife, your spouse? What's your preference? I want to get it right. Uh, that made me feel really good that they cared enough to ask so that they didn't say something that would be offensive. I often got questions in the workplace about what my boyfriend does or if I have a boyfriend. And having to correct the other person always made an awkward situation. Making the questions more focused on activities is a lot easier for everyone involved to feel comfortable sharing what they did on the weekend, for the afternoon, for a birthday, etc. Instead of saying, like, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? which could feel very assumptive. You can refer to the person you're dating as a partner, like this is my partner. And then someone who hears that might feel like, oh, my boss said that they have a partner. That makes me feel that I can open up about X, Y, Z. But you know, it can also be very cute. You know, I have a boo, I have a sweetheart, I have a honey, do you have somebody special? Or this is my date. You know, cause not everybody feels that they have a partner or a significant other. But we all choose words that we feel are appropriate for the way that we have people in our lives. The biggest tip that I could say is, you know, to be open and to listen and to communicate in the best way, in the most positive way that you can. Make sure that you're trying to use um, a person's name and whatever pronouns. Sometimes asking what pronouns do you want to, um, me to use seems a little awkward at first, but it really can help a person feel so much more included when you're addressing them correctly. Um, also realizing that you're going to make a mistake every now and then, you're going to slip up, and that's okay. Um, that you need to just, you know, acknowledge, I'm sorry that I, you know, that I said that, or I'm sure I'm not really sure what um, or how to phrase that, and then let the person respond to you and move forward. In my 13 years here at the University of Maryland, I didn't always identify as trans. And so some people have known me by another name, by another gender, and by another sexuality. And it's hard to try and uh, go back to those relationships that are 10 years old or older and work with folks and say, hey, but this is my new preferred name, and this is my new preferred gender, and can you please start using that? And I know we met under different circumstances, but these are the circumstances now. Um, and so inclusion is really important to me, to honor who I am today. I think another thing that makes my department uh, very inclusive to me as an LGBTQ person uh, is to hear positive feedback from my colleagues about my involvement with the LGBT Staff Faculty Association 
and to hear that they value my commitment to the community. A lot of people like to think that they're inclusive, but they have no idea what they're talking about, and they don't know the difference between sexual orientation and gender identity, because there is a difference. And I feel like going, reaching out to the LGBT Equity Center or going to a Rainbow Turf training would really help. I think one of the best ways to create an inclusive space is to really just get out there, be a friendly uh, face, go to events, get involved on campus, and uh, just make it known that you're excited to, to meet people from all backgrounds and, and you're open-minded and just ready to, to learn more. Very oftentimes you have the organizational mission, um, you might have the mission of the unit or program uh, that you're a part of. Uh, but very often, you know, times, it's the journey that you embark upon that can be most rewarding and most meaningful. So the relationships that you build with others are extremely important. Um, find ways of cultivating those uh, and look at ways in which you can help others um, regardless of uh, difference that they bring into that particular environment. Um, think about ways in which that journey can be something that is meaningful and worthwhile uh, for all. We have high expectations at the University of Maryland. We aim for excellence, but things aren't always perfect. You should not be hearing slurs or derogatory language in the workplace, and people should not feel targeted or harassed because of who they are. We have anti-harassment and anti-discrimination policies that help protect us all. If something doesn't seem right, talk to a supervisor or someone else designated by the university as a point person. If you are a supervisor, make sure you are up to date on our policies. If you want to go above and beyond, take the Rainbow Terrapin Network training you will learn how to be a better ally and advocate for LGBT inclusion. Together, we can make the university a workplace where we all feel empowered to be ourselves and to work together in support of our mission for outstanding public education, research, and service.